So, moving to LA, how did it happen? It happened kind of strange. Sad note is, I've always wanted to live in like the three biggest markets, the New York, the Chicago, the LA, and I grew up in Chicago. New York, I moved there probably like in my 30s or something, later in life, but now I'm in LA. I felt as though LA would be a place where I can be around like-minded people, you know, those who are going after their goals and their missions in life. A lot of people come out here for like... Uh, like show business and stuff like that. I ain't really into show business. You know, I don't really want to be an actor or a model or nothing like that. I like, I mean, I'm business. So, but here is great to hear perspectives and people that are fearless and people that want to really go after their goals. So, moving to LA happened weird. When I um when I got my position in Chicago, it was a great job. Don't get me wrong. But when I got that position, they asked me for five places that I'd like to go. L.A. was number one. Chicago was number five. And they sent me to Chicago. Yeah, I didn't like that. But, I mean, it was what it was. They treated me well. They gave me so many benefits. They, um, you know, they, they really treated me well. I, I've never had a position like that. I've never been at an executive level, especially being really young, 22 years old. At the time, and um, yeah, so it was a good situation. But moving to LA happened a bit strange. One day, I get a call from who was my ex girlfriend at the time, and she's like, Hey, I'm thinking about moving to LA. And I was just like, Why are you telling me this? You know, like, we're cool, but we're not that cool. But I'm, I'm figuring, you no, know, maybe she's just telling me because I'm. Um, she want to keep me in tune with her life. Or maybe she want to shit on me. You feel me? You know how people do that. But um, she's like, no, seriously. I've never had a roommate that I would room with again other than you. And I'm like, roommate? What are you talking about? She's like, um, you know, we can like we can move together. And um, you can still do your own personal thing. You ain't got to be in my life. And I can still do my own personal thing, I ain't gotta be in your life, and I'm like, come on now, if we're together, then we gotta be together, that's the only thing that, the, that's the only way that that thing will work for me, you know, so, little by little, we rekindle our relationship, and we had been together for like, four years before that, so, we still had love for each other, um, and we still loved each other, but the situation was just one where, you know, we weren't rocking together at that time. So what ended up happening is, little by little, we rekindled our relationship. But literally that same night, we both decided that we were moving to L.A. And then um, she was like, so when you want to go? And I'm like, six months from today. And six months from that day just so happened to be um, March 27th or something like that, whatever it was. And um, on March 27th, literally, I saved up every month. And that's how I did it. So what... What you guys can use from my story is mainly that it wasn't a, a overnight thing, nor was it like a, a super life changing, like things are going to be great or things are going to be horrible when I get there. No, nah, it was like I saved up little by little, you know, real patient. Most people I didn't even tell. I told my mother probably like a month after I had already decided that I was going to move. I think I told my aunt first, my aunt Jaqueta, I told her first, um, just mainly because Jock's, I call her Jock, so Jock is like eight or nine years older than me, but I respect Jock, I respect her opinion, and um, she's easier to talk to than a lot of other people, mainly because she's optimistic. Jock's young, and Jock still dreams. Even she decided might have decided before me or maybe shortly after to move to New York and and she's doing well out there so making a jump or leaving your life or changing the things that you really don't like or don't agree with is not I mean it could be life changing but just make the fucking decision like stop waiting around for me Chicago wasn't the place for me anymore I grew up there it was cool to grow up there but when I went back a lot of the people were doing the same things and even with the people doing the same things or not, 
when you go back, you have to go back to your block. You know, you got to go back, back to your hood. And for me, they tore my neighborhood down. So I was heartbroken while being in Chicago. They're serious. And this ain't no, no like, soft shit. I grew up in Inglewood, you feel me? Like, but they tore down. Gentrification happened. And they haven't even put things over there. They just tore the neighborhoods down. And it's like vacant lots over there. You feel me? Like, nah, man. That's... Yeah, so... I mean, that hit me. And then, in addition to it, it's like... Nobody that stayed there when I left and went to Atlanta for four and a half years are on different levels in their life. And what I mean by levels is that... For me, every year, I want to be on a whole nother level. You know, like, this year, I'm doing pretty alright. Next year, I want to be doing pretty good. You feel me? And the year after that, I want to be doing better. You know, like, who who wants to stay on the same level for the rest of their life? If I made 30 grand one year, then either I better be doing better or doing worse the year after that. The reason I say better is because who never wants to do better? Like, I mean, you can do bigger things if you're doing better. And the reason I say worse is because I just don't want to be in the same position. And if I'm doing worse, sometimes you need that pressure of your back against the wall so that you can make a huge change in your life and that may be the thing that pushes you and excels you to having a better life um so for me i saved up i saved up i had already had a savings because i had a high paying job but even with that high paying job i took a whole year off you know so my savings was pretty straight took a whole year off i had bills they weren't really high bills but i paid some bills every now and then um, took a year off, kept the savings in the tuck. I was using some of the money to invest in a little company that I was running at the time. But I mean, it was what it was. You know, my heart wasn't in it. It wasn't, it wasn't much passion in the company for me. Um, it was a thing that I thought could make a lot of money. So that's the only reason I was in it. And, um, once I made that decision, every month I saved a certain amount because I made a goal. So, what I would say for anybody that's trying to make a leap to L.A. or trying to make a leap to Chicago from L.A. or anywhere on the planet, every month set a goal. Well, set set a goal for the day that you want to leave or the time that you want to leave. So if it be six months, if it is six months, set that six months goal and say, hey, at the end of six months, maybe I need $6,000 or maybe I need $12,000 or well, some people... They may only think they need or can afford $3,000. So if you can only afford or need $3,000 in order to make that jump, then every month put up $500. How? I'm not sure how. I'm not sure of your financial situation. But if your job can't help you do it and it's something that you think is going to change your life, either you need to cut back on your expenses. So, like, you can't be running in H&Ms and Zara's and Saks Fifth and Nordstrom's every month. You got to make that sacrifice if you want to change your life. You can't be eating at McDonald's and fucking Chipotle and all of those places every day. You got to make that sacrifice. You can find a way to make that sacrifice. If it means a lot to you, you'll make that sacrifice. So every month, just put up a little, a little, a little, a little. And at the end of six months or at the end of a year, well, some people may even have to plan four years in advance. But at the end, you'll have enough or you'll have your goal. And then you'll go on and... Achieve the next goal of making that leap and leaving. For me, um, when, when that day came, that day came. You know, nothing else mattered. What I couldn't bring, I didn't bring. You feel me? Like, I brought three um, hockey bags full of clothes. One full of shoes and the other two with clothes in it. Everything that I couldn't bring, I left. And it is what it is. If I want it again, I'll get it again. Or if I want it, or if I want better, then I'll get better. But I can't hold on to small stuff especially something like clothes so that day came it was time to go uh, my aunt was supposed to come with me but she couldn't because of health issues but it was still time to go so what did i do i asked someone else to come with me which was my brother my brother joshua he held me down he rode with me we took a three-day road trip one day we stopped in um colorado the next night we stopped in um las vegas so we stayed in hotels at both of those places for one night. And then the third day, we pulled up in California and checked into our Airbnb spot that I rented out for a month. My girlfriend and I. So, you know, and it really worked out. My brother was able to get a, a, a vacation 
um, out the deal, and um, I was able to change my life and change my surroundings and put myself in a position where, I mean, I'm thousands of miles away from what I'm used to, so now i got to figure things out. And um, this is the start of a new journey in my life. So, here we go.